Nathaniel, congratulations on the win. How did it feel to, to finally walk out? I know you didn't get to do your walk out last time UFC London. Uh, how was it to walk out with uh, the crowd tonight? Special. You know, I can't really put it into words. That's probably another one of the best experiences of my life. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm glad to be back and uh, I can't wait to do it again. And um, how did you feel in there? Obviously, you know, you couldn't fight last time. It's been a while. Did you feel any different at all tonight? Um, the difference was I felt a lot of pressure in this one. You know, obviously being away for almost two years now, going up a weight class, fighting back in my hometown, you know, there was, there was a lot of pressure. And as they say, you know, uh, pressure makes diamonds. So, you know, I'm glad that I obviously put on a, a performance. You know, I don't know how good it was, but I like to think that maybe it could get a 50 Gs bonus, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm just pleased to be back. I've got a nice cup of tea next to me and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it again. And in terms of obviously being at featherweight for this one, what was the differences for you? That's a good cup of tea. Um, the difference was I felt like I was in the matrix, you know, I felt like I'd really shot some mile away. Um, yeah, I felt quick in there, you know, I felt mentally very, very sharp. Um, I don't know what he caught me with that cut me. You know, I did have a, a, a scar going into it already, so maybe it wasn't anything um, too, you know, obvious. But yeah, I just felt like I could really shot some mile off, and you know, I just felt like I had the speed advantage, which obviously I knew going in the fight I would. Um, so yeah, you know, 145 feels good. And is this where you're going to stay at 145? Yeah, I think so. You know, until I become a, a big fish in this pond and I start getting like five months' notice on that. Uh, fights you know it's going to take me too long to get down to 135 so you know I want to think about my health first longevity and I want to be active so yeah 145 is where I'm staying for now and when you look at the 145 pound division you know do you see particular names that you would love to to go up against any good matchups for you uh, I would love to go up against legends you know someone like Cub Swanson I don't know if he's retired now or still fighting someone like that would be cool you know I used to watch him when uh, when he was in the WEC um, before I was even fighting. So, you know, something like that would be exciting. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, I don't really care. Whoever the UFC obviously want to give me, ideally someone that's going to get me up in them rankings. But, you know, I don't turn anyone down. So um, whoever, Sean Shelby, you know, Mick Maynard, Dana White, whoever they want to give me, you know, I'll, I'll take them on. And last one from me, obviously, I'm, I'm sure you're probably eager to get back in there again. Uh, you know, in, in terms of a time frame, when do you think you're most likely to be able to, to get back? Uh, I think the doctor just said you've got three weeks for the stitches and I've got to get my hand MRI'd again. Um, but I'm hoping it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I don't want to jinx it, touch wood, but as soon as possible. You know, if I haven't got any serious injuries on it, then, um, yeah, you know, this is what I love to do. So I'd do it every week if I could. Um, I don't know about cutting weight every week, but yeah, you know, I, I love fighting. Right, Chris Allen. Um, we spoke in the past, actually, before. I've actually got a picture on my phone you sent me of when you busted your hand up that time, or your, your whole arm, really, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. How is that now? Is that 100% healed, or how is that affecting you? Because you just mentioned, obviously, you, you might have hurt yourself again. Yeah, the, it's the, the fight that happened with Casey Kenny, that's the one that still hurts. You know, I still get it in training. I think it's chronic, maybe. You know, I just think it's one of those things that I've just got to suck it up and get on with it. Um, my dad always says, just just hit him with it, you know. Um, there's not much more I can do than that. You know, if doctors had it their way, obviously I'd wrap it up in cotton wool and never hit again with it. Um, but yeah, there was talks about operating on it and this sort of stuff, but if I'm honest, I'd rather just try and crack on if I can. I just make sure that every training session now, I wrap it up properly and, you know, it has been good. It's been absolutely fine. So, you know, I landed a lot of right hands on Charles, so I think that's why it's hurting now. But, you know, hopefully it's just bruising and swelling and then it'll all come down. And how was the training camp inside? Because I know you train a lot of GB top team and obviously um, was it this, this year opened up the gym officially, yeah. wasn't it, this year? Yeah. Um, first of all, how it, does it feel to be part of something like that? Because you're someone people look up to. Because I know yeah. the guys who go through the amateurs and stuff like that yeah. and you're constantly, constantly getting serious talent through that door. Are you learning new things every day from these youngsters coming through? Not that you're old yourself. 100%. <laughs> you know, it's the youngsters that... Um you know, there's a target on my back now. So when they come in the gym, you know, they're coming from my, my head and that's the sparring that I need, that's the training that I need. You know, young, hungry, up and comers. Um, and they're keeping me young, man. I'm 29, so I'm not, you know, I'm not old by any means, but, you know, they're keeping me, me young. You know, I'm sparring with 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds. So, 
you know, if I can handle myself with th these young whippersnappers, you know, then uh, I think I can handle myself with anyone in the world. Yeah, it's surprising these guys are amateurs sometimes, isn't it, that come out of top two? Mate, you'll be surprised the speed. You know, we've got some guys that are unbelievable, you know, so it's scary to think what they're going to be like when, when they're in their 30s. It's crazy, isn't it? It's just the new breed of talent coming through, you know, and um, they're going to be looking up to you and seeing what you're doing. They've seen Brad's legacy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And um, do, they, do you feel you go in there and they do rely a lot on you? They look at you and think, do you know what, I want to be where you are? Or do they just treat you like any other man in that, in that gym? They treat me like anyone else. You know, they try and terrorise me and, uh, you know, banter me every time. So, you know, that's what I want. I don't want them to change. If I'm there and I, and I can inspire them, amazing. But I don't really intend on being a role model to anyone, you know, or anything like that. But, yeah, you know, they all know that I'm there for them. Um, so, yeah, you know, GB top team, we got a... Uh, We've got some bright, bright future prospects coming some up. Scary people there, mate, for sure. Um, and then, obviously, you've been out for long enough now, OK? And you want to you wanna get back in there quick. Obviously, as long as everything's all right, I know you'll fight regardless, but how quick turnaround, injury-free, would you want to get back in there again? Abu Dhabi sounds nice. Yeah. You know, the, that's a hell of a card they've got going. And, you know, I've been there twice before, but there was no crowd. So it'd be nice to go there and actually get to perform in front of, um, you know, their people and... Yeah, get some sun to my body as well, man, because I need it. <laughs> You'll be one of those fighters in Abu Dhabi with the old tan lines going in the cage, yeah? That's it, That's mate. It, I'll, be, I'll be sunbathing in Speedos in the daytime, <laughs> fighting at night.